We know the sounds of wrens and robins early in the morning, the sound an ocean makes when crashing onto the shore, and now we know the sound of a black hole millions of light years away. Let's listen. This black hole is at the center of the Perseus galaxy cluster. It sent out pressure waves that can be translated into a note. The only problem is that note is so low, humans can't hear it. So NASA scientists resynthesized it up by 57 to 58 octaves, and that's what you just heard right now. Joining us is observational astrophysicist Erin Kara. She's an assistant physics professor from MIT. Good evening. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Is this, was this cool for you? Because it sure was cool for me. <laughs> yeah, data sonification is something that we are really just um, tapping into now. And I feel like it's a really exciting way to to hear the universe and think about it in a new way. I remember the first time that we translated our sound, our light echoes, observations of light echoes into sound. Uh, when I heard it for the first time, I thought, oh my God, I can hear the general relativity in that. And that was a pretty exciting moment. Is this a little similar to, you know, we had the representation of a black hole, a visual representation of it. When was that, a year or two ago? Is this a similar sort of we're going to take what we get, say, out of a radio telescope and turn it into something that people like I can understand. Right. So those observations a year ago uh, of M87 from the Event Horizon Telescope, and perhaps your viewers will also remember the, the most recent image of the black hole at the center of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star. Uh, those were directly imaged with, uh, with radio telescopes, as you, as you said. Uh, the image or the sonification that you were just playing was actually converted from X-ray light, uh, and that is uh, mapping out the, the regions around this black hole um, based on X-ray observations. That's, that's the difference. X-ray observations. But yeah, similarly, okay. uh, similarly the, we can just, just remind us, for those of us who it's been a while since we talked about supernova in a science class, when, uh, uh, when a, a star is getting ready to collapse on itself, what happens and how do we get to the black hole? Right, it's a great question. So, you know, stars like our sun are, are bright because they are doing fusion, burning hydrogen and fusing into helium, and that's what's keeping it hot and, and, and eventually, um, you know, creating the light that we observe. And eventually, some of the most massive stars that we see in the universe, uh, they are burning heavier and heavier elements. They, they, and eventually, they can run through all of the, that fuel, and they can't produce any uh, more energy through that fusion process. So they can't produce any energy outward. And then gravity, because of the mass of that object, will just pull everything in. And if it's massive enough, it'll just collapse into a black hole. Crazy. So if you were traveling out there somewhere and uh, could open your spaceship window to listen for the sound of a black hole, uh, would you hear anything? Well, <laughs> no, you would not in, in, uh, in, in the sense that we cannot hear, you know, 50, uh, 50 octaves below uh, middle C. Um, but yes, right. in, that, in that particular observation that you are showing, uh, there is a dense enough medium around that black hole uh, that pressure waves are moving out. And, and that is you know, exactly what a sound wave is. It's just way too low for our ears to hear them. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.